She is, in my opinion, their biggest star right now. They've done a fantastic job of building her up, especially in their Asian market, their home base. And I've been wanting to get her on the program for quite some time. And I'm very happy that she is joining us right now via the magic of Skype, I do believe. And it is very early over there in, uh, in Hawaii where she is joining us. Do we have her? We have myself. And there she is, Angela Lee. How are you, Angela? Hi, Ariel. I'm doing good. Thank you. It's great to have you on the show for the first time. I've been trying to get you on the show since, I think, when you beat Mei Amaguchi. It's been almost a year. You are a tough person to nail down. <laughs> yeah. Um, I apologize. Um, you know, things have been busy, um, but I'm so glad that we could finally make this work. Do you, you, you're 20 years old, right? You're born actually on my birthday, July 8th, 1996, correct? Really? Yes. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, correct. <laughs> that is a great day to be born. I can't believe you were born in 96. That blows my mind. And, and you fight in a cage. Um, kudos to you for everything you've accomplished in just 20 years. But um, you don't usually wake up this early, correct? 20 years old, you don't wake up at 7 a.m. Actually, I wake up earlier than that oh. when, uh, when I'm in fight camp. So I'm, I'm actually okay with the time. Yeah. Usually I wake up at like 5 a.m. So. Okay. Well then I don't feel nice. so bad. I appreciate it. Um, do you feel like you kind of live like this double life? Cause, cause I, I noticed like, even when you Google your name, all these outlets in Asia are, are writing big features on you. There was a great feature on you, um, on, on CNN.com. And then I feel like when you come home to the United States, you now live in, in Hawaii. Uh, you don't maybe get that kind of attention because one just isn't you know, that household organization. Does it feel that way? Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe where you live now, you are a big star. You walk down the street and everyone recognizes you. Um, well, in the beginning, yes, it started out like that, where it was mostly all the media and press that was done in Asia um, because that's where I fought. And then I'd come back home to Hawaii. But now, actually, I've been getting like a ton of support from everyone in Hawaii back home, um, from the news outlets and, and, and such doing stories on, on me and trying to, uh, help to promote it and to tell everyone here in Hawaii about it. Okay. So I don't know. It's nice. I, <laughs> I don't really see too much of a difference. Of course, majority is always going to be in Asia and Singapore, but yeah. So they are catching up. That is good. Did you expect to be this big of a star at 20 years old or are you a little bit blown away by all of this? Um, I'm blown away by it, man. Every single day I'm like, wow, I can't believe this is happening. This is my life. It's, it's crazy. And it, it all happens so fast. So, um, you know, just really, really like incredibly grateful for everything that's happened. Some of your friends, other 20 year olds, what, what do they do? Are they in school? Do they have jobs? I mean, I'm sure they're not, you know, getting as much attention as you. What, what do they do? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, they're doing the college life and, and, um, I still keep up with them and, and, um, yeah, college life, part-time jobs, full-time jobs. Um, yeah. Do you feel like you miss that? Like you're, you're not able to be a regular 20 year old considering your occupation? Uh, well, actually in high school, out of high school, um, like my first couple professional fights, that's what, you know, a couple days, you know, I, I would be like really thinking back to, to if I wasn't fighting, what would I would be doing? And, um, yeah, some days I, of course I'm like, oh, I wish I could just be a normal kid, a normal girl. But now in my position where I'm at being a professional fighter, uh, you know, I'm, I wouldn't change anything. I'm so happy with, um, with what I do. One seems like the perfect promotion for you right now, given your, your, your family background and what they're trying to do over there in Asia. Do you think that if one wasn't around that you wouldn't have gotten into MMA this soon? No, um, you know, after, you know, I graduated high school and I was, had my first amateur MMA fight. Um, you know, I knew that after about three, three to five amateur fights that I wanted to, you know, try and look to get into a bigger promotion. And um, so if one championship, you know, if we didn't find one championship, it would definitely, we'd still continue with this career path. Did you or anyone who, you know, works with you, did they talk to North American based promotions? And if so, were they not interested given maybe your level of experience, age, etc.? cetera? Um, so my dad actually is the one who handles all of that for me. Um, and I kind of just left it to him to, 
to research, to, to do what's best. Cause I knew, I knew at the end of the day that he would have more knowledge and insight in which promotion we should go with. Uh-huh. Um, so I trusted him in that. And, um, yeah, so how it happened was that he actually had a connection at one championship. So that's how we got in through, uh, you know, Matt Hume. And, and your, your mother and father have a long history in the martial arts. I, is it true that you actually spar with your mom? Like, does she actually get in there and, <laughs> and help you train for these fights? Yeah, so my mom, she's she's amazing. She's like super mom. Um, yeah, she's still in there. She trains every day. And um, she's like one of my main drilling partners. My little sister too. She's 12, but she's <laughs> almost my size already. So okay. um, I drill with my mom and my sister for, for a majority of my fight camps, as That's, well as my brother, Cushion. Yeah, uh, your brother also fights for one. But like when you're going with your mom and with a 12-year-old, your sister, does it feel weird to be going full force or is this kind of a blessing? Cause everyone kind of gets mad at their mom sometimes, you know, you want, so this is an opportunity to maybe punch her when in regular life, you couldn't do that. You get grounded. Oh my God. No, no, no way. Okay. Um, I mean, it's never like full, like the live sparring okay. that I would normally do with like other teammates. Um, but definitely for the, for the drilling, um, you know, hard drilling technique. Um, I like pairing up with them just because they've been um, doing martial arts for a long time too. So it's not like they don't know what they're doing. Right. Um, they got a lot of skill. So what, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's her resume in, in MMA and excuse me, in martial arts and what's her dad's? Um, my mom. So she originally, my mom and dad actually originally started out doing Taekwondo okay. and, um, they reached back flat level and then they were competing nationally and um, in Canada, they're representing um, the Canadian national team. Yes. But from there, uh, they actually expanded out to, they stopped competing because they had me and then they wanted to teach. They opened some schools and they didn't want to just teach one discipline. They wanted to teach a broader range of martial arts. And so they opened their own gym. Um, multiple gyms in Canada, actually. And from there, that's kind of where they started, um, you know, this whole, their evolution of MMA. And that's how I started. That's how I was brought up, um, you know, learning mixed martial arts as a whole. So You were born in Vancouver and then you guys moved around when you were seven, right? To Hawaii? Yes, that's w correct. W why, why leave Canada? Great <laughs> life there. Um, I know. I, I love Canada. Honestly, I still have some relatives there. So we visit every now and then. But I think that, you know, my mom, she, my mom and dad, they met in high school over here in Hawaii. Okay. And um, they think they thought that it was a, a perfect place to, to raise a family. Yeah. So that's why I move. Well, I don't blame them. I love Canada too. It is a great place, but more opportunity here uh, in the United States. Your brother, Christian, also fights for one, recently suffered his uh, his first professional loss. Do you like fighting on the same card? I know you've done this before with him, or would you prefer, like, I know the, the Pettis brothers don't like fighting on the same card. The Diaz brothers don't like fighting on the same card. What about you? Do you prefer it, or, or would you rather not? You know, I can understand why, because it's so stressful, and there's so much... Uh, emotions on that night. It's very, um, you know, it's very crazy. Um, but for me and Christian, actually, we've been competing uh, with each other, you know, in whether it be in tournaments, whether it be in the amateur fights, um, since we were little. So it's kind of something we're a little more accustomed to. Okay. Um, I really don't mind. I, I actually like it because um, I feel like it's, it's like double the focus. It's, it's double the support and, and everything is when it's good. It's great. I mean, of course, um, we haven't had a bad night yet where, you know, that things have gone you yeah. know, not in our favor, but yeah, I think mostly it's my dad who, who doesn't really appreciate when both of us are on the same card too much, just because he has so much to deal with being, um, dad and coach of, of two fighters that night. Right. Um, when a, when a MMA fan looks you up here in North America, they'll see that you're the one Adam weight champion and they might think, Oh, you're the one Oh five pound champion. You're actually their essentially one fifteen pound champion. Um, why do they do that by the way? Why don't they just go with the same weight classes as here in North America? Yeah, so it got a little, um, the weight classes, uh, they changed uh, last year. Um, 
So now it's kind of a, a range between 105 and 115. Uh -huh. So they have that, uh, like, yeah, some, some, because uh, they changed the weight class policy so that no one uh, can dehydrate to, to cut yeah. weight anymore. Yes. Um, because one fighter, you know, passed away last year. And, uh, you know, so far it's actually been a great change. Um, a lot of the fighters now, they're, I see them on fight week and they're, you know, not looking like they're about to pass out. They're healthy. You know, they're being responsible about their diet and their weight plan. And it's a much more uh, healthy descent plan, I'd say. I saw an interview with um, one founder, Shatri Sichotong, just a couple of days ago. And he was saying, I would like to throw this out there. I want to see Angela Lee fight Ioana Jacek, who's the 115 pound champion of the UFC. As we know, UFC doesn't often co-promote, but maybe those days are changing. Do you share that sentiment? Do you think that you are on the level of Ioana or given your age and lack of experience? I know you're the champion, 7-0, I believe, but do you feel like you'd like a little more time before you're in that discussion? Um, you know what? I, I, <clears throat> being one's um, champion and um, having talks about, you know, having a super fight with Ioana, with the UFC champion, is something that, you know, I'm, I'm all open for. I think that it would be a really great opportunity. And I think that, you know, for me, every day I'm just learning and growing and, and evolving even more as a fighter. And so it, it would be a really great fight. I would definitely look, look forward to that. So when you watch the UFC strawweights compete, you're like, yeah, the, these people aren't as good as, as, as me. I can hang. I could beat them, right? Even though they may get a little more attention here in, in the U.S., they're not on my level. Um, well, I think that because, you know, the UFC is, is like the – predominantly the major organization here in North America, a lot of times other people don't, you know, pay as much attention to the other organizations yeah. and they might discredit. So I think that, you know, when I watch the, the fighters fight, I, I'm not necessarily say, oh, I, <laughs> I, you know, talk like that. Okay. But, fair enough. You no, know, I know that I can connect them and I know that I could, I'm pretty confident in my skill set that I do well. I noted on, on the show after your, your last victory that it felt like there was a big improvement um, from from that fight, uh, dating back to your win against Mei Amaguchi, you, your striking seemed more on point. You were very aggressive on the feet. I mean, it just seemed like you've come a long way in less than a year, and you took a bit of a break after winning the belt. Did you feel the same way? Did you notice an improvement in your game? Definitely. And I think, um, you know, that was the perfect timing for me to to really go back and 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 upgrade my skill set. Um, you know, just really focus on, on training and learning. Um, I was so glad that I was able to execute everything I wanted to do in that fight and, um, really, you know, gain even more confidence in, in other areas of my skill set. So, and, and then you're coming back in late May. Um, so you're, you're making up for lost time. Why did you take, you know, that, that long break and why are you coming back so soon now? Uh, well, the long break uh, after the title fight was because leading up to the title fight, I, I kind of fought pretty frequently um, five times in less than in a little over a year. So it, I don't know if that's right. But <laughs> yeah, I think that, you know, it was really great to, um, you know, work so hard, just put your head down and grind, 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 and then have, you know, a little bit of break to spend time with my family to relax and then also upgrade my skills. Um, I wanted to jump right back into the fight um, after my one in, in March because I wanted to kind of just get the ball going and, and get back in there. You know, I'm used to competing. You know, I was used to competing so often. And so uh, I was really itching to get back in the cage. So um, after my last fight, I was like, let's line up another one if possible. So I'm really happy that I'll be fighting again in May. And there's a, um, an Olympic gold medalist who's walking you out, right? Is his name Joseph Schooling? Is that his name? Am I getting it right? Yeah, Joseph Schooling. Um, so he's from Singapore as well. And I think that, you know, it'd be really great to see, um, you know, to have the Singaporean crowd see you know, two world champions walking out to the cage. And it'll be really great. Um, have, you, have you met him? Yeah, I've met him before. I've actually um, right. <laughs> taught him some MMA moves oh, wow. in the cage. <laughs> He's a nice guy. Yeah. So are you, are you actually friends or did, did one put this together? Um, 
Well, I've spoken to him on on a couple of separate occasions. So okay. I'd say more I'd than say friends. We're friendly. What's happening here? What are you trying to say to us, Angela? <laughs> no, no. Oh, okay, no, no. not like that. Okay, we're sorry. Friends. Okay, okay, platonic friends. I wasn't sure where you were going with that because I I said one buddy. your buddies. <laughs> okay, that's what my son calls uh, his friends in in, in pre K. Um, and so, <laughs> how do you feel about the 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 level of competition right now for you at one? Like, do you feel like there are enough people that you can, you know, feel challenged by, or would you like to see them go out and sign more women? Uh, well, going out and signing more women is, you know, is never a bad thing. I think that, you know, one championship, the women's division is, is growing right now. Yeah. Um, they do have a handful of fighters, but I would like to see those numbers increase in the next year or so. Um, but yeah, I think that, you know, my next fight will be against Estela Nunez mm -hmm. and she's fought and, and won before. So I think that they're constantly recruiting more and more women, more female fighters. And yeah, that's great for me too. The rules are a little different. The scoring is a little different. Do you prefer that over the, 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 the scoring and the rules here in the United States? I do because I think it makes for more exciting fights because of the broader rule set. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, I really appreciate, you know, especially, you know, when the knees are involved and because I'm, I'm, I love ground and pound so much. And so that's something that, you know, I appreciate with one's rule set. Right. And, and what about, you know, these days, I know the Hawaiian fans are very thirsty for some big MMA fights to come. There used to be a ton with rumble on the rock, et cetera. Um, do you know, I mean, I feel like you'd be the perfect person to headline a show in Hawaii. Have they been talking about that? I know they, they stick in Asia, but have there been any talks of, of bringing the event with you involved to Hawaii? <laughs> oh, I ask them every time I see them, man. Yeah. I, I would love, I would absolutely love it if the, uh, one championship would come out to Hawaii and do a show. I think, you know, they do really well, especially because they have, um, like four fighters from Hawaii um, that fight in one already. So, I mean, the numbers just keep growing. And especially with how much talent's over here, it would be great to, you know, sort of for Hawaii fighters to see that there are other promotions that they can fight in and do well. In. Right. So what do they say when you ask them? Uh, they say, oh, Jeff, trust me, we want to go to Hawaii. It's always the same answer. Okay. He's not going to say, no, I'm not going to go to Hawaii. All right. right? But, Keeping your hopes up. <laughs> yes. By the way, I read that um, when you were, I think, 16 or so, you saw Ronda Rousey fight and you were inspired by her. And she was one of the reasons, I mean, of course, your family, your mom and dad, but you felt inspired. Is, is that an accurate thing to say? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's so nice to see, um, you know, what she's done for women's MMA in the UFC in North America, yeah. because that was something that wasn't there before at all. Right. And, um, you know, going to Las Vegas and, and seeing her fight live and... Um, you know, I still have so much respect for Rhonda and all that she's done. Which fight did you see her compete in live? Um, the one against uh, Misha. Okay, the second first one. one. Oh, the first one. The the the, first, the second in the UFC, because that was in Vegas. The first was in Columbus, in Strike Force. Oh, the first in the UFC. Yes. Yeah, and so um, in your mind, are there any lessons to learn from Rhonda? I mean, because she almost now you know, left as quickly as she came. It doesn't seem like she's going to fight again. And I don't think a lot of people expected that. Um, a lot happened to her very quickly in Hollywood and things like that. A lot's happening to you very quickly. Do you try to look and, and learn from the past and how other fighters dealt, even with Gina Carano as well? Are, 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 I know everyone's different, but do you feel like you're, you're handling all of this well and like you won't leave as quickly as, as you came like the ones before you? You get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. You know, I mean, this sport that we're in, MMA, it's it's crazy. You know, it's full of like highs and lows and everything happens so fast. Yeah. I think that at the end of the day, you just got to really make the most of your time. And that's what's going to that's what's going to count. You know, I think that she's made the most of her time and, and she's done amazing things in that time. So uh, for me, of course, looking at, um, you know, Rhonda, looking at Gina and they've had very successful careers. Um, of course, I'm, I'm still young in my career. St I, I, I still want to, you know, run with this for, for a while. But uh, I think, yeah, if anything, just make the most of your time. Mm -hmm. so, How long do you want to do I'm this for? 
I don't know. It's hard to put an end date, you know? Yeah. You don't have I to. I feel like I could do it forever. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so right now you're happy. I mean. Things are going well. Yeah, I'm very You don't want to do anything else? <laughs> no. <laughs> Keep beating up your mom? This is the best job. <laughs> yes, it is a great job. And I know they treat you very well over there. Uh, Shatri saying that you're one of the highest paid female fighters in the world recently, right? Yes, that was announced. <laughs> yes, life is good. How many fights did you sign for? Um, every, every contract is different. So with the contract renewal, um, it's kind of based on time. So. Oh, wow. That's interesting. I like that. That's better than number of fights. So they have to get you X amount of fights in a, in a short amount of time. Or if the time frame comes up, then you become you know, a quote unquote free agent, right? Mm -hmm. This is very yeah. good. I would like to see that more here in the United States because you can't. You have a, a situation like George St. Pierre. The guy doesn't fight since uh, he signs a deal in 2011. Doesn't fight since 2013, and they're still sticking to the same old contract, even though he walked away from the sport. So very smart, very smart, Angela. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, you know, it's it's great for the fighters when it's like that. And at the end of the day, as fighters, you just want to do what you love. You want to go out there and fight, and um, I think that should be the most important thing. Well, I, I wish you the best. It was great to have you on the show for the first time. Um, you're, you're killing it over there, and it's a lot of fun. I thought your fight, by the way, against Yamaguchi last year was one of the best fights of the year. I had it in my top five. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it, and uh, what a great victory it was for you. And then the return uh, back in March was equally impressive. Best of luck to you in May. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for waking up relatively early, and uh, we'll talk to you very <laughs> soon. All the best. Okay, thank you so much, Ariel. I really appreciate you having me on. It was great talking to you. My pleasure. There she is, Angela Lee, just 20 years young, born on the uh, the best day on the calendar, July 8, 1996. What were you doing in 1996? She was born. Is that insane? Unbelievable. July 8, 1996, she was born. Now she's the one Adam Way champion. Great stuff there. And certainly a name to remember. Angela Lee, undefeated, returns to action in May for one championship.